Well, today is an awesome day. It's February 5th, uh, a snowy Friday. Luckily, the FedEx guy got into my just clear driveway to leave off a special delivery today of a Xeon D 1541. So this is a first in world look at a slightly modified processor, just a little bit different than its predecessor, about a 5% speed boost. But it also has a feature called SRIOV that did not um, get implemented properly in the BIOS of the predecessor, the 1540. Now, if we compare the two, there's you know a nice look here. And they're very similar. There's some software pieces that are a little different. Uh, API calls that can be different. Um, I really doubt you're going to notice that. Here's the stuff I care about with VMware, and they're, they're going to be exactly the same. All right, so here's the BIOS settings. I'm going to power this thing on for the first time. So I'm assuming the username and password and the IPM BIOS has not changed. I doubt anything has really changed. This is the same part number, same SKU, same motherboard. Uh, it's still called a SYS 5042D, so none of the part numbers change the order. And my understanding is these will be, will be available uh, from Wired Zone and other places probably around the week of February 22nd. Okay, here we are looking at the machine, and we're on a new BIOS, 1.0C. So already there's a difference here. So instead of, uh, well, yeah, I'd say I want to bring this up. So I'm going to bring up its predecessor, the other one, and we'll compare and contrast them. So let me get rid of the browser for a moment. Let's peel this off. Let's do two windows here. Sorry, just getting this set up. Okay, we've got the two systems set up. Um, the firmware is rather different as well, the IPMI level. Now, I doubt I'm going to find any of this stuff on the website. <laughs> Bing. Uh, sorry. Fresh. So if we bring up the product page... And we go to the motherboard and we look for the IPMI or BIOS firmware 214. That's what we have. We're not going to find this new stuff quite yet. Same deal with BIOS 1.0B. So, yeah, we're a pioneer here on the right with a new BIOS. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring up console redirection. I'll point out you can actually just click here and bring it up as well. First time you do it, it's a little wonky here. And I might have some trouble with Java and whatnot. I actually use uh, Internet Explorer, which is not used for much of anything else these days. It tends to work well for launching this Java session. Okay, let's get the other session going. Okay, only one click on that guy. All right. And we're going to need all the room we can get. Because when it boots an operating system, uh, well, it takes up more space. The resolution is going to jump up. Only one of these, the one on the right, has a Samsung 950 Pro installed right now. The machine on the left has no hard drives at all. Okay, another very important thing. Preferences. Interesting how that pops up over each other. All right. Display. I want to crank this up to full quality for this video so you get the best experience watching this. All right. I'm ready to power on for the first time. The two systems. Now what I'm going to want to do is kind of have a look around at the BIOS and see what differences. The one on the left, I've turned off the Super Micro logo. I turned off Quiet Boot, that's called. Well, that's not a significant or important thing, really. And uh, you know what, rather than spend too much time in the bias, I'm not going to make any changes on the one on the right. I'm only going to look around in it. So the one on the left, the one I've been using, 
has pretty much factory default BIOS settings, but it's been changed to have NumLock off and UEFI on. That's pretty much what my recommended BIOS configuration procedure is. Okay, the one on the right is booting for its first time with 64 gig of RAM. I think it had 128 when it was configured for me, but I wanted the two machines to be equal for RAM, so whoops. Kind of messed up your view of that, sorry about that. Let's get that back up. And I missed getting into the BIOS, that's unfortunate. So I'll just reboot it or I can hit macro, control delete, either way is sufficient. All right, the one on the left, let's go to restore, optimize defaults. Get right back to the factory. And we should see the Supermicro logo return. Looking at the top here, I see Java IKVM viewer, and that point release is also different. I'll just point that out. Okay, hit delete key. Now NVMe did not boot on the right. So however it's configured by factory default, it's not gonna work out so well for booting. UEFI GPT partitioned drive. Okay, hit delete, enter setup. All right, this should be a nice comparison here. Notice full speed on the memory. Whether you put in two DIMMs or four, you get the same two, one, three, three. Doesn't matter. Okay. Go ahead and fix the clock there. Nitpicking, but oops. Okay. Uh, it's got the date right. Different bias. We already talked about that. Different build date. So the build date here is January 4th. And here it is February 5th, uh, one month and a day later. Okay, I think I'm ready to move to a different screen now. Advanced boot feature. Advanced boot feature. Okay, identical. CPU, escape, CPU, and a different gigahertz. So there's the clock speed bump I talked about. Turbo 2.6 on the left, turbo 2.7 on the right. And the Xeon D is seen right there. And uh, you know what? I'm just going to pause for a moment, tweet this out, be right back. I mean, come on, I kind of had to just do this, right? <laughs> it's got a picture of the BIOS showing the gigahertz and the new BIOS 1.0C. All right, that's out there. Okay, moving along. Well, now it's Saturday, February 6th. Um, time to get these back to the same screen. Sorry about that. There we go, back in the same screen. And there's nothing different. Do we really know that without digging all the way? Well, let's be sure here. And to be fair, I didn't reset the one on the right. Kind of figure it was shifting me in factory default, but I don't really know. And I also want to capture in case someone tweaks something. Maybe there was an important change. I don't know. So this video is serving as kind of a quick log of how everything's configured. Whoops. Did not mean to do that. There we go. Escape, escape, down, enter, down, enter, escape. PM tuning, performance, PM tuning, performance, enable balance performance. It's not on high performance mode. Uh, for benchmarking, I have cranked that in the past, but it makes a very small difference. CTS makes a bigger difference. Okay, escape, 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 escape. Now, all right, did I do something wrong? No, I didn't. We have a difference. 
<laughs> okay. Do we have help? I don't know. I'll hit F1. Let's see what happens. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not going to find that in a manual either. I guess uh, we'll need a new manual at some point. Okay. Let's pretty look at throw a look at CPU config. Time for chipset config, Northbridge. Chipset config, Northbridge. Uh, here we go again. Okay, Northbridge. Northbridge, IO config, IO config. Never mind. All right, same thing. Full speed ahead. And the one on the right actually has M.2 installed, the one on the left doesn't. So it's going to mean a very subtle difference maybe at some point in this video recording, but I doubt it. Or anything significant. All right. Because they're not SATA drives, so you're not really going to see much of them in the BIOS. Okay. Shift by default on, which is good. How about memory config? Escape memory config. Okay, same dims. Same there as well. Southbridge. No difference. Uh, the top. Mm, okay. What is that? That's the IPMI. I don't have anything attached to the back. So, again, it's just IPMI. All right, next, SATA config. That's right, I did attach uh, an SSD in a drive bay. And um, they're attached to two different ports. All right, not terribly important worry about the port. I will set them to the SSD type. That'll be part of following my BIOS configuration procedure. This screen definitely differs. So ME has a new version. All right. This should get interesting. Uh, PCI bus, same. S-R-I-O-V. That's what folks have been wondering about. So it's disabled by default. I'll go ahead and enable that. Okay, what else is going on here? Um, quite a bit, apparently. I'm looking at these LAN options, and uh, there was no... ROM in the old BIOS for the 10G interfaces. Now they've added one. So I find that interesting too. Okay, we're done there. Super IO. Oh, and I have been reading, well, yeah, SRIOV turned on. Well, I want to test that. So yeah, I'll deal with that later. All right, serial port. I don't really care to dig into those all the way. I'm sorry. So I'm not going to be using them. All right. We are done. The advanced menu. Now we get to the, very quickly through the rest, uh, vent logs, probably nothing too exciting to look at there. You can view them. Get an idea of boots. Uh, that's not telling us much of anything. How about IPMI? Different version. And uh, nothing's changed there. And of course, we can see what the DHCP server fed out to me here. New MAC addresses, which is interesting because the same vendor. All right. How about security? 
This is going to be interesting. CSM enabled. Okay. Anything change in the secure boot menu? Escape, escape, nothing changed. Right arrow boot. Okay, we're gonna have some variations here. Uh, the Intel shows up at the top here, uh, but here in the right, it's detected that there's an NVMe Samsung and it's gonna put it first, which is interesting. And it's a good choice because, um, well, that's where the NVMe drive is. However, for compatibility, it seems to, uh, I've made a choice that's not going to work for my Windows Server 2016 that's installed in there already. So now I suspect it's going to boot just fine. Remember, it didn't boot successfully before. The other thing I do is just, it's time. Just go Uf UEFI, makes uh, ESXi install easier. Uh, you put Rufus on there, or you, you just mount the ISO and install ESXi, and it's simple. Um, I don't want a, a partition formatted MBR anymore. I want a GPT. I want it to grow beyond two terabytes someday by seamlessly without having to redo everything. So that's why I do UFI. So now I'm getting into, uh, well, seeing if it'll boot, I suppose, and then going to my optimized bias settings. Let's see if just changing the boot order and going to dual, let's see if that'll work with my, my drive before we get into any other fancy tuning. So all I did was change the boot order. The bottom it says boot override, just notice that you can actually go in and just boot right now to the next thing. I'm gonna save changes and reset because I want you to witness a full boot or reboot. No smoke and mirrors here. Now, while I'm getting that, while that's coming up, I can get ready with my bias settings here and what we have is a video I can actually just walk through and set the bias. Now, will I be able to keep up with two machines at once? Yeah, I don't know, but uh, it'll be a real handy way to get all this set or skip the video and just do the settings with words. You have a choice, whatever you prefer. Okay, and there's all the settings, many of which I already talked about. Very simple setting changes like numlock. So when you go to type somewhere, you don't get zany keystrokes, and you'll see that in a minute here. So even though I don't have focus on this window, I focus on this window, Chrome, and I type stuff, what you'll see is NumLock gets toggled at this point, and that's annoying, so that's why I turn it off. Here we go. Windows Server 20... 16 boot. I'm gonna let that let it rip at this point. Okay, this first boot's gonna be a little slower because it's finding new hardware as Windows Server or any Windows is apt to do. Give me a little more room. Ta da! All right, we have ourselves a nice server with task manager showing us performance CPU tab of 0.8 gigahertz. So we have to apply some load to this thing to get it to shine and uh, abuse the CPU a little bit. Now, not the best test and I have almost nothing else uh, on this machine. Uh, NVMe is very light on this CPU, so the gigahertz are barely budging to run a basic NVMe disk benchmark test. Okay, we are in the Samsung MDME driver. Sorry about that. The very latest one too. All right. I think it actually performs better on Windows 10 from remember those numbers, but yeah, we got some problems there. Uh, again, I was messing around with it and it's just a 
you know, basically a beta technology preview. Okay, let's uh, let's abuse the CPU. This is how your CPU looks normally, averaged. So if you forgot or didn't know about that menu, just right click. It's cool. And show kernel times, I usually turn on. Kind of shows like device driver level. If you see this bottom filled in area spiking up, you got a real problem. Uh, the gigahertz, uh, well, turbo's on one CPU. I'm abusing all of them. So I think I made a pretty bad example of trying to show off. Turbo, so let me think about that for a moment uh, and a better approach. There's all the uh, CPUs being uh, abused there. All right, be right back. I had resumed the video. I had some problems with the network share because all the cores are busy. I killed one immediately. Uh, I was able to get some stuff done. You can see this one as, uh, well, I don't know. So the UI became responsive again. So I grabbed CPU Z. Let's see how we do with this. And this would be a great time. Okay. Multiplier, core speed. So it seems to be just picking up on core speed at the moment. Yeah, I don't know about that. Let's kill some stuff. All right. So we still have a lot of abuse going on here. And I'm just going to launch CPU Z again. All right, and I'm installing Samsung Magician. So now, oh, okay, so Magician was already installed. It was weird, it was, didn't show up anywhere. So the gigahertz, still at 2.5, okay. All apps, Samsung Magician, there it is. All right, and I could have gotten that from the tray. Sorry about that. Uh, does it give me temperature? I'm trying to remember, I haven't used this. A little bit. Um, no, you can see we got decent speeds in the other one. I can go ahead and run it in the new one. All right, when I shut this down, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back in the BIOS and just turn off NumLock and that other stuff. Oh, yeah, let's see if NumLock turned off outside here. Hmm, doesn't seem to have. Interesting. Okay, performance tests. Old machine versus new. Same results, basically the same. You wouldn't really expect much of anything different. Uh, that number was different. Well, just one run. Firmware is current. All right, a little weird that it doesn't give us temperature, but we're not abusing the dry right now anyway. What would be more interesting to you is probably temperature of the system. So we can look right here. Sensor readings. All right, let's do that in the machine on the left as well. Okay. A little odd. IPMI on the left is a uh, Acting up or something. Don't really know what to say about that. Okay. Anyhow, these are all pretty normal readings. The system runs pretty cool overall. And the fan is not cranked up by default, the fan policy. So, Let's see if there are differences in IPMI between the two systems that are obvious here, because we know the IPMI level is different and I never finished showing you that. Okay, looks like uh, 
preview took a little while to come up, but it did come up. That worked. Like I said, new MAC address scheme 0025 versus 00C4, completely different scheme there. And we've already been through that. Configuration. Okay, something's new. Or something's removed in the one on the right, which is interesting. So newer IPMI on the right. Looks like this line wraps toggled some license checking versus syslog. Well, that's a feature change right there. I have syslog on the right. Uh, cool. So maybe we're getting a preview of what might happen in the future. Hard to say. Okay, this stuff looks similar or the same. There's me messing with my system a lot, changing subnets at one point. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure there's gonna be too much else to show you there. So we can probably minimize those. Oh, did temperature come back? That's the end of my first look at the BIOS on the new BIOS revision with a slightly revised CPU. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and for visiting Tinkertry.com.